So um, now the floor is to uh, Sumit Roy from the Tata Institute and he's gonna speak about kitchen vibration and prim varieties. Please. Thank Thanks to the organizer for giving me the opportunity to talk about my research. Okay, so I will talk about the Hitchin vibration, which is a morphism from a moduli space of certain kind of Higgs bundles to a vector space. And we'll see that the generic fibers of that map is given by some prim varieties. Uh, okay, so let X be a compact rim surface of genus greater than equal to two. And let K be the cotangent bundle, that is the canonical bundle in case of curves. A Higgs bundle over X is a pair uh, where E is a holomorphic vector bundle and phi is a morphism from E to E tensor K, okay, which is called a Higgs field. Also, you can think about this phi as a section of the endomorphism of E with values in K. And the Higgs bundle over the curve, it was introduced by uh, Hitchin in 1987. And a sub-bundle is called phi invariant if it is preserved under phi. And we have a stable condition. So a Higgs bundle is called stable, respectively semi-stable. If every non-zero proper fine variant sub-bundle uh, satisfies this slope condition. A strict inequality for stable and less than equal for semi-stable. Degree of a vector bundle means uh, degree of the determinant bundle, which is a line bundle. And if degree and rank are co-prime, in that case, uh, semi-stable implies uh, stable. Now, if we impose the stability condition, then we have the moduli space. So let uh, M Higgs denote the moduli space of stable Higgs bundles of fixed rank and fixed degree. Okay. And this M here is the moduli space of stable vector bundles. And the cotangent bundle of that is an open sub variety of the moduli space of Higgs bundles. Uh, since uh, the cotangent bundle has a symplectic structure, and therefore uh, it, in, it, it induced a symplectic structure on the moduli space of uh, Higgs bundles. And in fact, uh, this moduli space of Higgs bundles is hyperkähler. It satisfies a gauge theoretic equation. Uh, so, and uh, let us consider the characteristic polynomial of phi whose coefficients s i are basically trace of O H i phi, okay. uh, which are sections of uh, k power i. And uh, so we have a morphism from the moduli space of Higgs bundles to vector space A, which is direct sum of H naught k power i, which sends a Higgs field phi to these coefficients, SI. Okay. And this morphism is subjective and uh, in fact, it is proper. So therefore the, uh, the, the fibers are uh, compact. And in fact, the fibers are uh, abelian varieties. Okay. So the question is what are exactly the generic fibers of uh, this morphism? Okay. So let us consider an element in the base A then we have a spectral curve xs together with a covering map pi from xs to x how is degree r covering map uh, and this is and the spectral curve is given by this equation which is basically the zeros of the characteristic polynomial but this eta here uh, is a tautological section of uh, uh, the cotangent bundle So, and also for a generic point S, the spectral curve is smooth. So if we consider a line bundle over XS and take the push forward, pi star L, that's a rank car vector bundle over X. And also it has a uh, 
Higgs field, which is given by the multiplication by this tautological section eta. Reverse of this uh, map, they're exactly uh, the, the isomorphic to the Jacobian of the spectral curve Xs. Also, the base A has dimension half the dimension of this moduli space, and uh, therefore, this uh, moduli space of Higgs bundles, uh, this is an algebraically completely integrable system. So now we are going to talk about the uh, Hitchin vibration for SLRC Higgs bundles. So uh, SLRC Higgs bundles is basically a Higgs bundle of Frank R uh, with trivial determinant and whose trace of the Higgs field is zero. Okay. Therefore, the Hitchin map here, this is moduli space of SLRC Higgs bundles. The base here, this first coefficient is zero because the trace is zero. So therefore, I runs from two to R. So it sends the Higgs field to the coefficients of its characteristic polynomial. And in this case, the generic fiber is isomorphic to uh, this subset of Jacobian, basically line bundles over Xs for which determinant of the push forward bundle that is trivial. So, uh, so for the uh, map pi from x s to x, that's a covering map. We have an associated norm map from the Picard group of x s to Picard group of x, which is defined by this uh, using the divisor. Send summation n i p i to summation n i pi p i, and we have an isomorphism the top exterior power of pi star l, that is a determinant of pi star l. Is isomorphic to norm of L uh, tensor k power minus r into r minus 1 by 2. This is due to uh, Beville, Narasimhan, and Ramanan, this isomorphism. And so, therefore, if its determinant is trivial, if and only if this norm of L is isomorphic to k power r into r minus 1 by 2, and, uh, and that is equivalent to saying that this L tensor pi upper star k power minus r minus one by two, that is in the kernel of this norm map. So kernel of this norm map is basically the prime variety for the morphism pi. Okay. And uh, it's also uh, proved this, that the generic fibers for SLRC Higgs bundles uh, are isomorphic to this prime variety. Okay, so now we are going to talk about uh, the Hitchin vibration in case of parabolic bundles. Uh, so let uh, for that, let us first fix a set of finitely many points. Uh, so we fix this D throughout this talk and a parabolic bundle, basically means a vector bundle together with a weighted flag over uh, D. Okay. So formally speaking, so uh, a parabolic vector bundle of rank R over X is a vector bundle of rank R uh, together with the parabolic structure over D, which means that for all points P in D, so points in D are called parabolic points. For all parabolic points P in D, the fiber has a filtration of subspaces. And we have a sequence of real numbers between zero and one, which are called parabolic weights, uh, satisfying these inequ uh, inequalities. So, so uh, we are associating, uh, we are assigning each subspace to uh, a real number. So alpha one p is assigned to the subspace e p comma one. Uh, similarly, alpha i p is assigned to e p comma i. And collection of all such uh, weights, parabolic weights, for all points in D, uh, it is denoted by alpha. And we say that alpha is full flag if the dimension of the successive cosines equal to one, which means that 
this filtration here is complete. So there are R many subspaces here. Okay. And the parabolic degree is defined by the degree of the underlying vector bundle plus this additional part. So this is parabolic weights times the dimension of these cosines. So in case of full flag, these dimensions are one. Therefore, this is just the summation of all parabolic weights. So one thing to note that that in case uh, the parabolic degree uh, may not be an integer because it's alpha IP, they are real numbers. Okay. So parabolic degree is an integer only when all parabolic weights are zero. Okay. And in that case, we will say that the parabolic structure is trivial. We also have the notion of uh, parabolic tensor product, parabolic dual, and uh, uh, home, uh, parabolic homomorphism between two parabolic bundles. So a parabolic Higgs bundle uh, is a pair where E is a parabolic bundle and phi is a Higgs field from E to E tensor KD. So KD is the K tensor OD. And also assuming that the Higgs field is strongly parabolic. What does that mean? It means that for all points in D, the Higgs field uh, sends the subspace E P comma I to the next one, E P comma I plus one. Okay. So, so th this, this means that the Higgs field at each parabolic point P is nil potent. So strongly parabolic means nil, uh, the Higgs field is nil potent over D. Therefore, the coefficients of its characteristic polynomial all vanishes over each point of D. Therefore, trace of OH, uh, trace of OH I phi, uh, basically sections of K power I D I minus one because the vanishes at each parabolic point D. So let M a uh, parabolic Higgs, it denotes the moduli space of stable parabolic Higgs bundles of fixed rank and fixed degree and fixed parabolic structure alpha. Then we have the parabolic version of the Hitchin map, uh, which sends the Higgs field to these uh, coefficients. And here the base is the direct sum of H naught, K power I, D power I minus one, because these traces are elements of H naught, K power I, D power I minus one. And, and this, this morphism is subjective also, and it is proper due to Markman. And uh, yeah, genetic fibers also, this isomorphic to Jacobian of the spectral curve. Here, the spectral curve, we, we need to consider the tautological section of uh, KD. OK. Uh, so now let us define the symplectic and orthogonal parabolic Higgs bundle. So fix a parabolic line bundle and tau be a homomorphism of parabolic bundles from E tensor E to L and tau tilde uh, from E to e L tensor E dual, which is defined by this composition. Here the OX is a trivial uh, parabolic bundle. It basically means all parabolic struct or parabolic weights are zero. And that's a sub bundle of uh, E tensor E dual. And we say that uh, a, a, a symplectic or respectively orthogonal parabolic bundle is a pair where this tau is anti symmetric, respectively symmetric, and this tau tilde is an isomorphism. Okay. And for orthogonal or symplectic parabolic Higgs bundles, the Higgs field uh, need to become compatible with this uh, form tau. It's a bilinear form. So, uh, okay. so when uh, parabolic weights are all rational, in that case, the notion of symplectic or orthogonal parabolic bundles uh, coincides with the notion of parabolic principal G bundles, where G is a symplectic orthogonal group. Okay. And uh, a sub bundle is called isotropic if 
tau the uh, the bilinear form that vanishes at uh, uh, on f say and the stability condition which we need to consider the isotropic sub bundles here and uh, that uh, in, uh, induces a moduli space of the uh, symplectic orthogonal parabolic x bundles So let this denote the moduli space of stable symplectic or orthogonal parabolic expansion. So G is symplectic or orthogonal group. So when the parabolic structure alpha have full flags, then the dimension of this moduli space is twice the dimension of G minus uh, two uh, into G minus one dimension of G plus two n into dimension of G mod B. So where n is the number of points in D. The parabolic points, and D here is a Borel subgroup of uh, of G. Okay, now this is due to uh, 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 Bosley and Ramanathan. Okay, so let uh, E tau phi. An element in this moduli space, then then the characteristic polynomial uh, is of this form because uh, the uh, uh, the simple the compatibility of the Higgs field with the bilinear form and the non-degeneracy of the bilinear form uh, will, will imply that if lambda is an eigenvalue of phi, then then so is minus lambda. So eigenvalues comes in a pair. So if we assume that all eigenvalues are distinct, in that case, the uh, characteristic polynomial is of this form. There are no odd, odd terms. Okay, so a, this H two i, they are sections of a uh, K two i D two i minus one. Okay, and uh, since and the, the spectral curve here, which is given by the zeros of this characteristic polynomial. It possesses an involution because uh, all exponents are even. So it possesses an involution sigma, which sends uh, lambda to minus lambda, and therefore we have a double cover uh, from the spectral curve axis to axis mod sigma. Okay, and uh, yeah, uh, so so we have the, uh, we have a norm map for for this. Uh, covering map from the Jacobian of X H to Jacobian of uh, X H mod sigma, and uh, the kernel of that morphism is uh, the prim variety. So in our case, the prim variety for this covering map is isomorphic to subset. Uh, it consists of line bundles over X H. For which sigma star L is isomorphic to L dual, so the sigma also acts on the Jacobian. Uh, it sends the degree zero line bundles to degree zero line bundles. So yeah, so for which for that sigma star L is isomorphic to L dual, uh, because because uh, a norm map here is given by it sends the uh, a x to x plus sigma x. Okay, therefore this is the kernel of this norm map, which is the prim variety. And uh, yeah, so the uh, Hitchin map here is given by uh, this. The, the base is uh, now H not k power two i d two i minus one because uh, these are the coefficients of the uh, characteristic polynomial. And the dimension of the prim variety, okay, is basically genus of x s minus genus of x s mod sigma. And that is equal to dimension of the base A, and which is half the dimension of this moduli space. Okay. And the result in this direction is the generic fibers for parabolic sp2mc x bundles. It is isomorphic to this prim variety. So let's give me an outline of the proof. 
So let E be an element in the fiber, I mean a generic fiber, uh, which is a symplectic parabolic Higgs bundle. Then since the, we are considering generic fiber, the uh, spectral curve is smooth. Therefore we have an eigenspace bundle, L. And then uh, there is an isomorphism here, which uh, these two have the same degree, these on the left hand side and right hand side, and on the left hand side has six and whose zero side is basically the uh, zeros are the ramification locus of that uh, uh, spectral curve. And if we consider this line bundle U, which is up there, so we can we can take the uh, uh, square root of this bundle because this degree is even, and then uh, this line bundle U is a uh, is an element in the prime variety, and so which means that sigma star U is isomorphic to U dual, which comes from this isomorphism. Okay, so starting from an a symplectic a parabolic Higgs bundle, we, we obtain an element in the prime variety. Okay. Now conversely, let uh, U be an element in the prime variety. Uh, then take L to be just U tensor, uh, the uh, K, a K axis tensor pi star K dual. Tensor uh, pi upper star m dual to the minus half. And then consider the uh, push forward of that line bundle. We have already seen that this push forward line bundle, it has a, it has a Higgs field, which is given by the tautological uh, section of the uh, cotangent bundle. Uh, I mean, in, in case of parabolic bundles, is tautological section of KD. So the parabolic structure is uh, for the for the parabolic structure. So, uh, so for all points in D, one can show that there is there is an uh, open subset V for which there is fiber E over V that is isomorphic as o, OV module uh, to OVX mod X power two M plus h to x power 2m minus 2 plus h to m. Okay. So this h to y, they're basically uh, I mean, components of, uh, of s. Okay. Uh, and uh, yeah, since this, since this h to y, they vanishes at each parabolic point. Therefore, e restricted to p, e over p, that is isomorphic to cx mod x power 2m. And also remember that this uh, the Higgs field is given by the multiplication by x. Uh, so so the Higgs field basically, uh, uh, I mean, gives the parabolic structure on on this push forward bundle. And for the symplectic structure, uh, it is considered two sections U and V. Over L, and this symplectic form is given by this. I mean, so this this form is a uh, uh, non-degenerate, and it is skew because this sigma star is square equal to minus one, and this gives us a symplectic form on this push-forward bundle E. Uh, for the orthogonal case, the spectral curve, uh, basically the characteristic polynomial, the last coefficient is square of a section. And so the spectral curve is given by uh, this, this equation where PM is uh, a section of 
a power m d power m okay so therefore the spectral curve always has a singularity whenever this pm is zero uh, so you need to consider the desingularized curve which is called xs hat and also uh, also uh, this spectral curve xs has uh, it has an involution sigma so we are considering now the extended uh, uh, involution sigma hat on xs hat and uh, yeah and for that we have a premium variety basically uh, that we have a double cover for xs hat and similarly as before and uh, the kernel of that uh, or a norm map is the premium variety and this and this hitching map in this case the base is uh, given by this direct sum of h not k power 2i d2i minus 1 i runs from i to m minus 1 and last coefficient is this because because uh, this it, it sends the higgs field phi to h2 comma h 2 m minus 2 comma pm okay. and the result is that in the generic fiber isomorphic to the premium variety for this desingularized curve and for the odd orthogonal group the characteristic polynomial is uh, redu uh, reducible okay. it always has a zero eigenvalue okay. uh, so therefore therefore we consider the spectral curve with this component which is zero of this component uh, which is sim similar to the case of symplectic uh, group in fact they have the same base uh, here the symplectic group and the odd orthogonal group uh, because that is quite uh, that is because i mean they these two groups the symplectic group and odd orthogonal group they are they are lagrange dual okay uh, therefore the, they these two have some similarities and uh, and this result for this case is the generic fibers they are isomorphic to this prime variety for this spectral curve axis yeah. okay. Okay. So, thank you thank you so much thank you thank you are there any questions uh, i have a question please so your description of the fibers was in the stable locus of X bundles. Is that right? Uh, which locus? The stable locus. So you've described like a generic fiber in the in the vibration. Yes. Is that right? Yes. Yes. Have you have you thought about the describing the fibers outside of the stable locus? Ah, okay, okay. So yeah, you and me and and singular. I mean, okay. So no, I have not thought about that, but yeah, I mean, I mean, there are really not enough description for. Uh, so you're saying that for a singular singular locus, right? Yes. Not, yes. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, for singular k, a singular locus, there are not enough good description. I mean. There are some results by, uh, I guess, uh, so that is for, for not for parabolic uh, scenario, for uh, for uh, X bundles, there are some results, what are the genetic fibers, and uh, not a genetic fiber, what are singular, uh, singular fibers for uh, the Hitchin map, and it is by, uh, I guess, uh, Oliveira, Andre Oliveira, Maybe I don't remember their name. Okay, yeah, there are some uh, results for uh, X bundles. There are no results for parabolic X bundles or anything for uh, what are the uh, singular locus of that uh, uh, H in map. Yeah, I have not okay. thought about that also. Yeah, cool. thank you. Uh, I was also wondering so you had this uh, involution on the de singularization. Yes. yes. Um, so how does it act on like the exceptional locus? 
in the desynchronization. Okay, so this one? Yeah, okay. yeah. Okay, so this, I mean, okay, so the uh, singular points here, basically the uh, fixed point of, uh, so this curve has a, uh, has a uh, involu uh, involution sigma, and exactly whose fixed points are the, uh, uh, the fixed point of that involution are the, uh, they are the uh, singular, point, singular points of this spectral curve. Right. Yeah. And, uh, and yeah, so, we are, actually, we are exactly removing those points. So, so from the uh, from the uh, uh, spectral curve. Okay. Any more questions? No. Okay. So thank you again, Sumit. Uh, thank you. And. Uh,